Hey, I wanted to make a really quick video just to go over some of the Wanderer's abilities because I've noticed that there's quite a significant DPS difference uh, as to whether you use him um, as a normal attacker on the ground versus with all of his buffs active and you know just doing the most you can do. So hopefully this will help you get there with your own personal playstyle. So let's have a look at his build. So mine's only level 81 at the moment. Um, he's got the Windsith, which is maxed uh, at R5 as well. So we've got the Desert Pavilion Artifact set, which is the best in slot for him. Um, that's HP, attack, attack, animo bonus, um, crit rate. All of them are at level 20, except the Sands, because I don't have the artifacts to level it yet. But it should give you some idea as to what sort of damage you should expect and how to use it. Um, C0. And um, we've got talents at 866. And stats are 1719 attack with 55% crit rate and 151% crit damage. Okay, so nothing spectacular, but it's just to give you a comparison There's of no the difference um, in attacks it's depending on the way you play him. So I've also got Bennett, I'm gonna maybe throw him in the mix later just for that power infusion and maybe even use his uh, burst. And I've got a really weak Farazan here, so. Um, she doesn't even have this uh, talent unlocked because this is the one that gives her a lot of damage as well. Basically, the higher her attack is, her base attack, the more uh, she buffs. Okay, that's at level 70, I believe. And this is the magic um, animo buff. So that's the triangle, that's the burst. And I'm only going to get 19.4% because it's on level 2. But we'll see what that looks like just for a bit of fun at the end. And she's only got one artifact on for energy recharge because her energy recharge is horrible. Um, oh, and she's got a sacrificial bow at R5. Um, that's probably what I'm going to keep on her anyway. So let's go back to Wanderer. To so force a conversation. we're going to start on normal attacks on the ground. So no buffs, Let nothing. Just leave. let's see what we can get. Okay, three and a half thousand. So about three thousand six hundred. Now let's do a charge attack to activate the artifact set 40% damage buff. I've got 15 seconds now. So you know it's 4,500. So approximately 1,000 buff just from that. Okay. So it's been about 15 seconds now. So now I'm going to go into the next phase, which is flight. Now watch normal attack damage in flight. 5,200. I'm rounding up a little bit. Okay, so bear that figure in mind. Now I'm going to do a charge attack when I'm flying to proc his artifact buff again. Charge attack, there we go. Now normal attack, 6,000. 6,400. So it was... I saw nearly 6,500 there. So again, another sort of 1,200 on top. And now, if we add Pyro into the mix, so the way to do that, let's do this, let's do this. Bear in mind, he has a Winsith on, so sometimes he can get an attack buff of 120%, but I'm just coming into here just to make sure that his attack is still on 1700 and hasn't got that buff for the purposes of testing. But when you're playing him, you might end up getting that buff and that will increase your DPS anyway. So now the enemy's got Pyro on him, I'm going to go into the flight form so I should absorb that pyro and should, I'm going to do charge attack to proc his artifact buff and then I'm just going to wail on him with circle okay so let's go charge attack here we go you see the pyro symbol 10,000 7,000 okay well, oh, that was uh, interesting we had a random 10 <clears throat> Excuse me, 10,000 um, attack there. Not sure what that was, but maybe we can try that again. Okay. The wind rises. Seven thousand three hundred. I'm not sure what that 10,000 was. I feel like that was an outlier because um, I've never seen that high before, just from doing what I just did. So we're looking at 7,300 or something, right? Um, so again, it's another increase of about 1,000 um, on top of not using Pyro. So that's the 30% attack uh, buff from the Pyro swelling. 
Now, finally, I'm going to do it with, um, I'm going to drop a Bennett buff, and we're going to see what that looks like. Um, what the hell? You know what? I'm going to drop the Bennett and the Farazan buff in there before we um, do all the DPS. So, any guesses? We hit 7,300. We've seen 10,000. So, mm, I'd say let's let's aim for like maybe 15,000 and see what happens. Bear in mind, my Bennett is pretty strong. But let's go. So, I'm going to go Teamwork here. Here. Fury. Charge attack. 35,000 and then just spam. 22,000. 24,000. And then obviously the buff's worn off because, um, you know, Bennett's buff's gone. 24,000. Wow. Okay, let's see if we can uh, actually beat this guy now. <laughs> Fire is on. Let's get you back. She's so weak right now. That was funny. Okay, let's try that again. Adventure time. I won't have fires on though, but oh well. Oops. Bad timing. Charge attack. We lost Pyro. Should we get Gorba as well? Let's pick up Gorba. Wow. Oh wow, he died. Okay, that was a bit of fun. I got carried away there. But as you can see, his damage changes massively. So from 3,300 or something from the ground, right up the way from progressively flying and then adding a pyro buff and then adding Bennett's burst in there as well with all of that, along with the Desert Pavilion um, artifact. Um, proc as well so there is quite a lot of fun to be had with him and just bear in mind when you're fighting um you don't want to be spending too much time on the ground if you're on the ground too long you're not really maximizing a dps because other characters can probably do more damage than him um well, the second you can get into the air try to grab hold of an element prefer preferably pyro and um go out. yeah so <clears throat> that's it have some fun